the lecture. So uh, up to now, we discussed about the object of a subject in you know, object subjective experience. And if I go to mean, this is the mentalities. Chitta plus James Gas. And they cognize us an object. This is called Aramana. So I mentioned about the mental image here. My image, something. We don't take it as a rupa or a reality. It is how the mind cognizes the object. It is an idea of the mind. So easy reference, I gave it the mind image. Then this object is called object of reference. This is the entire thing of subjective experience. I also mentioned when subjective experience happens, there is a certain sense of its own existence. This is in the first glance you may see that I am breaking a very basic fundamental of the tradition. No, I'm not. Why is that? Mentalities cannot make itself as the object. I am saying that every mentality has a certain quality of its own existence, a sense of its own existence. That is why when we recall a certain incident or a certain occasion or emotion, we can feel that it is not a new thing. It is something that we have experienced. In the, experience, in the first experience, you focus on the object According to the normal superficial knowledge, we know that mentality doesn't have awareness of the mentality. So if there is no such awareness, when you recall back that same incident, you may feel the object as, okay, you have seen it before. But when you recall the incident of the emotions, the mentalities, you will never feel the familiarity. It should be a very new object to you. But we feel it as that something that I experienced, I, I felt it, I was there, your existence was there. So that is because the mentality themselves have a certain sense of existence. So in that lecture I mentioned that this sense of, uh, a sense of its own existence is the most fundamental basic necessity, reason for us to have the idea of I. I experience, I feel the Vedana, I felt the Vedana. I have the emotion. So these kinds of ideas are possible because there is a certain sense of its own existence within these mentalities. That is the, this is how I would draw a subjective experience. This may lead to controversial debates, I know that. But that is why if you have experienced Nibbana through Magga Palachitta, Magga Chitta is not aware of the Magga Chitta. But he can observe the Magachitta with the Pachavikana Jnana. But when he is observing the Magachitta with the Pachavikana Jnana, that object is not something new to him. He knows that this path, these spiritual qualities appeared within myself. I experienced it. So that why that possible familiarity is there? It is because there is a fundamental quality of awareness of its own existence within every mentality, there is no mentality which doesn't have that experience. You, this one you can verify with practical experience, practical evidence. So then, today we discussed about this object, object, two aspects of the object, the image or idea we get in our minds, like how the mind perceives the object, in which way and to which, to what object it refers to. Now in this lecture, mainly I am focusing on the verities of this object of reference. Sometimes this object of reference can be an ultimate reality, like hardness, softness, cohesion, heat, and so forth. Chitta, loba, dosa, moha, and so forth. Sometimes it can be a concept, like a chair, and so forth. How to distinguish this is very important. I'll be explaining it in detail. What is the difference of a concept and an ultimate reality and 
how the how do we find out this difference in the same object you can get a conceptual idea at the same time you can get an ultimate idea so we'll come into that point then we have certain another object of references which are vijjamana which exist which are avijjamana which does not exist so i have formed i have found three types of avijjamana objects so we'll come to that clarification at the end if the time allows i go to the vipassana object if the time doesn't allow i will leave that for the following lecture next day right so uh, yeah so any questions so the paramatta objects paramatta objects the paramatta objects means the reality how do we uh, define the paramatta objects in the first beginning of the these sessions of lectures we mentioned paramatta dhammas are the reality objects which are tangible to the wisdom so which can be verified its existence can be verified known when you investigate they become manifested and also they are uh, they can be uh, liable or they can be applied into any of the four functions of very fine reality karina kicca pahana kicca bhavana and satchikara so i'm not going to explain about the ultimate realities so if re uh, normally we have few types of ultimate realities like hardness softness and so forth mind emotions and so forth so sometimes our subjective experience can refer to such ultimate realities like patavi apo tejo chitta loba and so forth these objects are uh, ultimate realities which are the objects of reference are twofold vidita and avidita vidita is what you have directly experienced within yourself avidita is what you have not experienced within yourself so for example chitta we can all know if someone has the knowledge ability to focus on your own self we know what is the nature of a chitta the nature of chitta is to focus upon an object not only focus visesen janati focusing upon an object having separated it from other objects that is the difference of the special characteristics of vijnana a chitta can take various types of objects but it focus on one particular type of object of group or group of objects having separated delimiting it from other object that is the prefix v suggests the sub commentary says v means visese it means delimiting or separating a object from other various possibilities of objects in the existence so vijnana focuses on one object or one group of objects having separated it from other objects so if we if we know this if we have experienced this within us when we focus in our for example in our vipassana meditation we can easily perceive this type of an object so we call it vidita objects the vidita object means things that you have experienced by yourself then there is another type of object, avidita object avidita objects are like when we a person who doesn't have have not attained jhana has not attained jhana thinks about jhana who has not attained jhana contemplates about jhana who has not attained makapala chitta contemplates about makapala chitta on these occasions what sort of object comes into our mind in one way we can call this is a panyati object it's a idea we develop based on what we learn based on our inference at the same time it can be classified as an object which we have not directly experienced so that is why if you go to the vipassana subjects of our tradition to all the yogis that tradition has introduced to contemplate on if i go into numbers 81 lokya chittas 81 lokya chittas includes even the jhana chittas the sub commentary say these 81 lokya chittas become very vivid clearly distinct to the ones who have already attained the jhanas but it doesn't mean that a person who has not attained the jhana cannot contemplate on the uh, uh, jhana chittas they can contemplate on jhana chittas but they are not very vivid to him he doesn't have that clear direct experience on them so these are called avidita objects but another avidita object is in swishuddhi marga has instructed 
regardless of the uh, yogi's uh, nature, samatha yanika, upasana yanika, to start the contemplation with the patisanti chitta. Samatha yanika, upasana yanika yogi, or even a normal samatha yanika yogi cannot focus on the patisanti. We don't know what is the patisanti nature of the patisanti. But the contemplation has to lead from the patisanti chitta. Sometimes the Buddha mentioned in the Kharjaniya Sutta, a yogi contemplates on the past life based on vipassana contemplation. So what kind of a contemplation is this? A person who has not known the past life with Pupe Nivasa Jnana, direct Abhijnana Chitta, how does he contemplate? He, these objects are not Viditatu. So he still can focus them, uh, focus on them based on his knowledge or understanding about the chitta. Because he knows the nature of the chitta, then he applies the knowledge that he gained through the sutta and construct an idea. This idea is an idea of ultimate reality. We call it a phenomenal object. This object is not a full panyati. This is still belongs to the group of ultimate realities, especially in the Vipassana meditation. That is why you find, that if you read the Vijitimaka, you find, there is no, because I explained this in the Panya lesson also. Some yogis misunderstand the direct experience as, as found in the Theravada tradition. Some things direct experience should be one-to-one -one experience and advocate a Vipassana tradition or Vipassana technique that you have to always focus on the present objects which comes to your own six senses. There is no such a, there is no evidence to prove such a meditation technique. Always you find a contemplation, this object of this contemplation is constructed with your own understanding. If you go to the Nekti Patrana, I have also given the reference in this handout which I gave in the Amoha uh, lecture. So you construct this idea. So uh, before going into that, coming back to the present topic that I have been talk, uh, discussing, there are two types of Paramatta objects, Vidita and Avidita. Vidita is the realities that you have uh, experience within yourself. Avidita, uh, like a person contemplating on jhanas, who doesn't have jhanas, contemplating on patisandhi, bhavanga, chuti chittas, who has not experienced them. So still they are Paramatta objects because that is how the Vipassana has been explained within the tradition. Subcommentary says these jhana chittas become supakata anhanti. Supakata means very clear to a person who has only obtained jhana. Supakata means very clear. It doesn't mean that a yogi who has not attained jhana cannot contemplate on these objects. So these are the two types of paramatta objects that we can find. Then we come to the panyati object. Panyati objects means in the next page, panyata ramana. It means the concepts. Concepts like chair, table, a woman, man, deva, uh, tree, and so forth. So the kapanyati is something that we construct based uh, of in our uh, with our mind. So uh, also that abhidita objects that we I just before mentioned, abhidita objects which we have not directly experienced can also be a can be also classified as a panyata ramana in one sense. So these avidita objects can be an ultimate reality object and also a panyati object, how we interpret this point. So now I will focus on the real panyati objects like chair, table and so forth. So what is a panyati means? I am planning to give a separate lecture on panyatis if the time allows in semester. Panyatis means something that we construct. There are two types of panyati, nam panyati and atta panyati. Nam Panyati is the usages, word that we use, that is a grammatical usage, so, or, or maybe the signs. So this is out of the discussion here. So Atta Panyati means an idea of a one thing that we construct based on few aspects of ultimate realities. Looking at a group of ultimate realities, we consider as a, them as a one thing. All the four, four great elements in the body, we consider as a one thing and call it a body. Then, generation of ultimate realities we consider as a one thing which lasted for a time and consider this is the life or the body we lasted from young to young age to till now. But it, it was a generation of Nama and Rupas and Nama and Rupas. So that is called, we still consider as a one thing. Then the next thing is, these ultimate realities have various functions. So looking at these various functions, 
we can they various ultimate realities perform different functions looking at this we consider there is a one thing which perform all these functions so these are this is how we create panyatis, especially related to our life. But there are many other panyatis, like this are direction is a panyati, time is a panyati. So this is panyat, pan, the less, uh, topic of panyati is very broad. But if we talk about uh, panyatis related to our life, we construct the idea of a self or a body looking at a group of realities, generation of realities as a one thing, or the functions of various functions of different realities as a, a certain one thing is performing these functions. So this is the idea of Panyati we, get, uh, we create, create. So now, when the actual object, for example, the actual object according to the tradition is the real. When we go to the ultimate sphere, is the realities. So they are just natures. So these natures, looking at these natures, the mind starts to take them as a one object. So that one object which the mind creates is not uh, something that is found here. It is something that we create in our mind. It is something that we create in our mind. Actually, the rupas exist here. Referring to the looking at the rupas, we consider it as a body or person or my uncle, auntie, something like that. So it is something which happens in the mind image. So therefore, according to our teachings, Panyati does not exist in the reality. Why is that? According to the tradition, what exists in the reality is the ultimate natures. So looking into this group of ultimate natures, generation of ultimate natures, function of ultimate natures, we construct a certain object in our mind. So this is called Panyata Ramana. So this Panyata Ramana, actually it is not an object of reference. I have mentioned it is not an object of reference, it is something of the mind image, it is something related to the mind image. So then a question may come, if you consider about a chair, in the ultimate sense it doesn't exist in the ultimate uh, in the reality, it exists in our mind, but we normally say now what is this uh, concept based on what is, the, what is, how do we explain this concept of chair? When we focus on the concept of chair, we cannot fully ignore the ultimate realities. The basic theory is, without ultimate realities, there is no concept. Concept is something you construct in your mind, looking at the ultimate realities. With, if there is no ultimate reality, there is no concept. So therefore, this, when we focus on a chair, our reference of the object is the realities. So when we focus on the chair, we can fully ignore the existence of the reality. For example, we, when we think about the chair, we get an idea of a chair. So when we get the idea of a chair, chair, idea of chair is constructed by looking at the four great elements and the color which exist in this space. Four great elements occupy this space. We discuss on this matter how the space is occupied in each cluster of robots and the color gets manifest to our eye. Knowing this, with our, any of our senses, we get the idea of chair. What is a chair in the ultimate sense? The four great elements and the color or Gandha Rasa Oja, we just we, we focus on five elements. These five elements exist on a certain space, so we call it a chair. The same elements, if they exist in a different shape, in a different space, we may call it a table. So therefore, the concept is something constructed based on the ultimate reality. So when the mind focuses on a concept, it cannot completely ignore the existence of ultimate realities. Another point, there is a meditation subject sometimes we do based on our body parts. Vipassana meditation is twofold. Sometimes we lead the Vipassana based on Panyati. Sometimes we leave the Visakshana based only on ultimate realities. Example, you look into the Kaya uh, Satipatthana. Kaya Vipassana, we have the 32 body parts leading to uh, Vipassana. You should go to the same Dhamma Vipassana, the same Rupa is explained as Rupa Khanda. So what is the difference? Whenever Lady Sayadu in Paramatha Deepani suggests that when you focus on the uh, elements based on the 32 body parts, 
your mind does not focus only on the realities because we consider here as a patavi or here as patavi it means a hard thing which is a non self i mentioned we mentioned in the rupa uh, lecture of rupa some scholars tend to argue especially uh, uh, some scholars tend to argue uh, that accepting a substance is like accepting a soul this explanation according to the tradition is not fully correct soul or self has its, the tradition has defined the definition of soul and self very exclusively very detailed very uh, precisely substance just becoming a substance doesn't indicate that it is a self self means which can sustain by its own if it had a origination it was originated by its own or by created by a very huge self which has its control over its own existence or sometimes which can control others so these are the basic characteristics of a soul being just a substance doesn't mean doesn't implies that it is a self so therefore sometimes in kayana pasana there are various ways that uh, for uh, that two body parts can be put into uh, vipassana one way is we consider this hair uh, body hair skin bones and so forth as hard particles hard things so hair is patavi so in this contemplation lady sayado suggests with this uh, uh, high analysis she says that these types of meditation vipassana meditation are not focusing on pure ultimate realities the object of such meditation is called mingled or mixed with panyati panyati misaram and vipassana i have given you the reference if you go into the uh, uh, the penultimate paragraph of the of the of the paper the one last even while one focuses upon the ultimate quality of an object still his mind is unable to ignore the conceptual nature of an object for instance when a yogi contemplates hair as patavi at that time his vipassana chitta focuses hair as non self elements which are with abandoned hardness however it cannot fully ignore the conceptual idea of hair object of this type of vipassana is not a pure ultimate reality it is the ultimate objects mingled or mixed with concepts ladies i do give this reference panyati misaka paramatta ramana i give a new word for that panyati misaka paramatta ramana so now focusing on ultimate uh, concept still the mind has an image that is the concept but it cannot ignore the object of reference which are the ultimate realities for example if you go into further details the commentary suggests that someone we can also verify this with by the uh, suktas we consider someone as my uncle uh, example is given someone's uncle become an arahant but still he has ignored the uh, idea of the attachment but the relative still cling this is my uncle this is my auntie this is my son so the attachment is still there so in such a case our mind has a self view or a clinging or a object of self this person is there but this object focuses on non self realities that is called the paramasa wrong concepts wrong misunderstandings focusing on a reality it constructs a wrong idea so therefore at that moment idea of uncle son cannot happen without a body without the rupa khanda without the vedana sanya then it become a dead body so therefore looking at this considering these five aggregates of some of the aggregates we construct the idea of uncle and auntie so this anyati is not fully free from paramatta at the same time i mentioned when you focus on paramatta in some meditation subjects you cannot still ignore the conceptual idea fully then i also mentioned there is a meditation subject which is focusing only at paramatas this is at that point you have to only focus on the intrinsic nature intrinsic nature of the reality but it is another point like because i mentioned there is panyati missa vipassana object now there is a pure 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 paramatta vipassana object for that we have to focus 
exclusively at the intrinsic nature of the object. But still, even in such cases, you cannot ignore the conceptual, certain conceptual qualities, like the generation or the group. The sub uh, Anutika, the sub-commentary for the sub-commentary, commentary for the sub-commentary for Dhamma Sangini, suggests that even this, all the ultimate reality, this is a practical experience to my understanding. Ultimate, when you are focusing on vipassana meditation, ultimate realities appear to you as substance, as substances. Not, they are not substances according to the tradition, but as substances. This is valid whether you are a developed yogi or a beginner amateur yogi, for both they appear as substances. That is why in Abhidhamma, we don't consider about animitta vimokha. Animitta, nimitta means the, it happens with this idea of substance. So when the chitta is focusing on an uh, object as subs, in a way of substance, we cannot completely give up the idea of nimitta. Nimitta means the shape or a thing. So that's why in Abhidhamma, we don't have that vipassana which leads to the Magapala cannot be considered as Animitta Vipassana because uh, Animitta Vipassana, uh, how to say, it, it, because the Vipassana Chitta still focuses on Animitta. So this is a different subject. Now the thing is, the sub commentator says, with their, I think with their experiences, and if a yogi contemplates according to what the tradition suggests, you always, you too will get such an experience. Ultimate realities appears to you as things, as generations. Lady Seado in his Paramatta Deepani suggests it is the it is the ability of a Buddha, according to the tradition, to focus on the one moment of a reality, like Chittakana Rupa Kalapa. All the yogis, including Savakas, Kacheka Buddhas, have ob observed the generations of Nama Rupa. They are rising and falling and their intrinsic nature. So even if you focus at an entire fully ultimate reality, still you cannot ignore the compactness or the oneness of a generation. We take objects as a group of objects as one, but at that time you are fully focusing on the intrinsic nature. It is a bit different from concept contemplating hair as Patavi. In that contemplation, the idea of hair is not fully abandoned. So therefore, that kind of object is called Panyapti Nisaramana. The type that I've mentioned, that you fully focus on the intrinsic nature of the reality, is called an ultimate object. But still, even in such contemplation, you cannot give up the oneness of a group or generation of a group. So that is what, uh, if we talk, that uh, uh, how to say, what I wanted to say was, when you focus on a Panyati, you cannot completely ignore the ultimate reality. Even if you focus on ultimate realities, still the ideas of Panyati, the oneness, the group, would still exist. So then how do we decide whether an object of your mind is an ultimate reality or a Panyati? That is based on how you focus on the object. The same object, the same object of hair can be known as a panyati of hair. That same object of hair can be known as a panyati missa object considering hair as patavi. The same object of hair which we consider as hair can be contemplated as a pure paramatta focusing only at its rupana nature or rupa quality exclusively. So therefore, to decide whether the object of a chitta is a panyati or a paramatta, our way of focus also matters. But in any of the cases, the object of reference did not change. Object of reference exists without the influence of our focus. How we focus is what matters. So there are three types of focuses that you can make. You can consider it as a panyati, as giving a name like hea, chea and so forth. Also you can consider this hea as patavi or this chea as patavi. At that moment, we will, that will Lady Shadow suggests this object is a panyati, nissaka paramatta object. Or you can exclusively focus 
with all the idea of they're completely giving up their molested nature, molested nature or the uh, color uh, sensitiveness to the color, say eye, or uh, heat nature, so forth. You focus only on the intrinsic nature, this becomes the ultimate object. So this is another point. So decide this is this kind of object is called Nipatita Paramatta Ramana. Nipatita Paramatta Ramana. I have given the reference in the handout, right? So with the uh, explanations given also in Vishuddhi Magga, I have given, you can read it at your leisure. Then I go to the page number 12. Page number 12. So far I explained Paramatta objects. Paramatta objects were twofold, Vidita, Avidita. Anyati objects, and also I mentioned now an uh, object can be looked at as a paramatta, panyati object, a panyati object, a pan, as a panyati object, panyati misaka paramatta object, or a paramatta object. Now we come, this object of reference can also be termed as vijamana and avijamana. Vijamana means existing, avijamana is non existing. So vijamana objects are now we have to explain it in a different perspective. Uh, ultimate Vijamana object is the Pachupana object. Pachupana object means a reality which has come into its existence, either arising, persisting, or vanishing. If during that moment, a reality is called Vijamana, existing. Existing. Then now, even we take, now it's a different perspective. You don't mix it with the Panyati Paramatta object. Now, again, now someone consider, now there is there are a group of objects, ultimate objects. This object we consider as a chair, for example. Now, if, this, if these ultimate realities, which are considered as chair, do exist, if they exist, this object, the Panya, even it's a Panyati object, because it refers to ultimate realities, Still, it has to be called a Vijamana object. So, Vijamana object is twofold. Vijamana object, the, pan, uh, the Pachupana Vijamana object, which has come into its existence, is called Pachupana Vijamana object. It means the ultimate reality. For example, Patavi arises, persists, and passes away. During this phase, this is a Pachupana Vijamana object. Now, about the concept, even, so don't mix with the first explanation, this is a different approach. Now a Panyati object, looking at the four great elements, four great elements, we get the idea of a chair, for example. So now this is a Panyati, right? Panyati. Panyati based on these four great elements. So how do we say in the normal usage, I consider there is a chair, that chair, my chair. If that chair is not destroyed, if that chair does exist actually, so in that case, even I, my object is a Panyati, as long as the Paramatta Dhammas, which were the reason for this Panyati, exist, we have to say this object is also a Vijjavana object. So there are two types of Vijjavana objects. Pachupana Vijjavana object and also the uh, conceptual object of which the Paramatta still exists. If I read it. 8.41 <clears throat> when the subjective experience refers to an ultimate reality which is in the three phases of existence upada titi or banga that object is called vijjamana ramana or pachupanna vijjamana ramana even if the person focuses upon a conceptual idea as chaya or pagoda if the ultimate realities which represent that object exist in reality it is called vijjamana ramana and also bhuta ramana so another word. You can find this word in the commentary. I have given references to the next uh, quote, the next explanation. Bhuta. Then we come into Avijaman, Avijaman object. Avijaman object is non-existing object. It is threefold. According to the Theravadians, unlike the Sarvastivadians, Theravadians consider, if you go to the Kathavatu, page number, I have given the page number uh, in the next page. Put <coughs> not. Uh, Footnote 37, Katavattu, page 301-303. So in this uh, debate, the Sarvastivadins of that era suggested that even an object of past and future still exists in the existence in a different form or in a different manner. But the Theravadians held to the idea, past and future objects can be known with the mind, 
can be known with the mind, but they do not exist. Can be known with the mind, they do not exist. So, according to Theravadians, past object and future, past which has arisen and passed away, which has not yet arisen, are called avijjamana object. So, when we call them avijjamana, the pachupanna object becomes vijjamana. So, that's why I put the vijjamana name, vijjamana, pachupanna as a vijjamana in the previous section. So, past atita ramana and anagata ramana, atita, at, atita, atita vijjamana object, Atita avijjamana object and anagata avijjamana objects are objects that do not exist. They have already gone away. So another thing that how the tradition explains, uh, according to the teachings related to Pathana, when mentalities, uh, if you go to the page number 13, page number 13, third paragraph, <clears throat> according to the teachings related to Pathana, when our mentalities focus upon Pachupanna Ramana, at that time they get the assist of the Aramana Puraidacha Pache force. However, that support is not obtained while focusing on Atita Vijamana and Anagata Vijamana Ramana. So therefore, this existing nature does matter in the tradition in some context. Now we come into Abhuta Ramana object. Abhuta Ramana object is also twofold. Abhuta Ramana means Someone focuses upon the examples given like Sasa Visana. Sasa Visana is a horn of a rabbit. Sasa Visana. <laughs> and also, uh, I don't know whether such uh, creatures existed in the past who got existed. So, Sasa Visana. Or the Almighty Creator. Or something like which doesn't exist. If we consider or fantasize or believe on such an object, an image may appear in our mind. But the object of reference does not exist. They does not exist in reality. So it's an abhuta ramana, avijjamana object. Another abhuta object is, now I mentioned, in the vijjamana objects, you consider about a chair. It's a conceptual object, but if the realities which represent the chair still exist, we call it a vijjamana object. Now in the same way, if that chair is completely destroyed, at that time, even we consider about that chair, we get a certain image in our mind, but the ref object of reference is no more. It's an abhuta object. How do we find this, verify this? You can go into Visuddhi Magga under the Metta Kamathana. I have given the reference. Metta Kamathana. A yogi who was a very skilled yogi in jhanas, skilled in jhana, Metta jhana, one day started to practice Metta upon his Upajaya. He's very skilled in jhana. But today, this time, he couldn't go into jhana. So he went to his teacher and said, It's very strange. I'm very skilled in jhana. But I focus on my upajaya. It's very clear to him. But I cannot go into jhana. What is the reason? All oh, my sila is perfect. My, I have performed my duties. Everything was fine. My focus, abilities. I feel everything is okay. But I cannot go into, go into jhana. The teacher said, Nimittang so gavisi. Go and check your real object. So when he checked, it says, the story says, the Upajaya has passed away. Because the Upajaya has passed away, he could not enter into the jhana. This leads to another entire scope of a discussion. Why it is and why he couldn't, there's a different case, right? If I start a discussion on this, it will go for another, 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 uh, we have to discuss in detail. But what happened was, in that occasion, now if you have experience in metta, when you practice metta, what happens? You clearly perceive a person. That is your practical experience, right? So this is the image that I'm talking, mind image. That yogi had a mind image. When we focus on our mother, father, we have an image and they are living there. So we practice metta. Sometimes you may get into jhana. A person who has already mastered the jhana, how much vivid the object should be to him. So it was a very vivid object. But that Upajaya was not existing anymore in this life. You can ask, he's in Sansara, it's a different case, right? So he was not existing. So it was became an Abhijamana object to the person. So he, that was the only reason that he couldn't go into the Jhana based on this object. So likewise, if the object even, so at that occasion, Already the mind image was there. The real object did not exist. So this is called, at that moment we call 
the mind takes an unreal object non existing object object that does not exist and so forth so this is and this shows the relationship be between the mind object and the actual object sometimes do matter in some cases right sometimes do matter in some cases so this is these are the classification so we explain about classification panyati object paramatta object paramatta object is two fold viditha ramana aviditha ramana and i have also discussed about how to determine whether an object is a panyati or paramatta then we have also explain the object of reference in terms of vijamana and avijamana so vijamana object was two fold as a pachupana vijamana object and even a concept if the reality which are based to this concept still exist that object is also called a vijamana object then uh, we talked about avijamana objects three fold atitara atita vijamana ramana anagata vijamana ramana and abhuta ramana that is also two fold completely imagine unreal objects and while you are observing while you are focusing that object has already passed away that is also called uh, abhuta or uh, uh, abhuta ramana or avijamana ramana so these are the points that i want to emphasize then to conclude the lecture i think still as we have time i'll be going to the object of vipassana the object of vipassana as we have uh, discussed so far there are lots of clear evidences in visuddhi magga and pati samvida magga suggesting that the object of vipassana is a phenomenal object phenomenal object means are we focus on the possibility of sankharas possibility of sankharas so how did we say this phenomenal object if i remind again if i hit into this board a sound will arise if i ask you the question if i hit again what will happen you will surely say the sound is going to happen even without direct experience you can say a sound is going to happen so why how do we say it because we know the phenomenon is if two things clash together a sound is going to come the result is a sound even without confirming with direct experience we can say the outcome will be a sound that is called phenomenon of conformity now in vipassana meditation now the idea of sound what is the, how do we get the idea of a sound when two things clash a sound a sensitive nature to the ear will occur this is the object of vipassana we call it a phenomenal object phenomenal object means uh, objects which are possible to happen so the real outcome of vipassana is a phenomenal understanding that's why if you want to get rid of the kilesas what we have to do is observe the observe the objects of the panchupadana skandhas which are the base for the kilesas the reason for the kilesas after you investigate the panchupadana skandhas kilesas cannot sustain because you have not it thoroughly so understanding comes regarding a phenomenal idea why do i say so if we have to always observe the present objects you can never finish the vipassana because vipassana it, to get into the understand uh, to uh, come to the full understanding if you have what you have to focus the present object you have to keep on focusing on the present objects even after becoming you cannot become arahant because the new objects you are going to encounter has not been thoroughly investigated so what is the final culmination of this understanding you understand whether the consciousness is past present or future rupa past present or future vedana sanya sankara past present or future whatever condition reality is will surely pass away this is the understanding we get so we get a phenomenal understanding to go into this phenomenal understanding you focus on a past future present object or a phenomenal object doesn't matter at all if you go into samyutta nikaya if uh, my khanda uh, samyutta or nidana samyutta uh, my my memory is correct buddha starts with the atita anagata uh, sutta it means he for he is asked to focus wants to focus on the past life future life or past objects future objects in vipassana starts with past and future objects in vipassana direct teachings of the buddha and then you can focus later on a uh you can include the pachupanna object so whether you start in pachupanna present future doesn't matter at all 
what the understanding is is a phenomenal object. So the commentarial tradition, including Visuddhi Magga, including the Nethi Pakarna, has suggested how to develop understand this phenomenal object. So that is why the instructions were given in Visuddhi Magga for contemplating the Rupa. You sit on one place and start contemplating. Rupa of the first year tells didn't pass in the second year, they passed in the second year, which in the second year didn't pass in the third year, which was in the third year, didn't pass in the fourth year, which happened in the fourth year, didn't pass in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, till the tenth year. You don't need to be in, uh, till, get all till 80 years to contemplate the eighth, eighth chapter of the life. So even at this moment, we can contemplate how the Rupas passes away throughout the entire life till death. So, we are not focusing on an object as we think is an actual object, it's a phenomenal object we get into the mind. For exa another example, rising and falling of Chakku Pasada, the Kambaja Rupas, Chakku Dhatu, Sota Dhatu. If you follow the instructions given within the tradition, even within the tradition, what is necessity for a person to contemplate the rising and falling of Chakku Dhatu is, the, chak, the moment Chakku Dhatu happened for the first time in this life, that is in the mother's womb, and the time Chakku Dhatu, generation of Chakku Dhatu passes away at our death. This is the rising and falling of Chakku Dhatu, according to the tradition. You don't need to focus on the momentary rising and falling of Chakku Dhatu. If you can do it, it's something else. But what requires, because thing is, when you focus the rising and falling, the tradition asks you to focus on the condition. Why the Rupa happen? Condition of a Chakku Dhatu in a one life is a one Kamma according to our tradition. So that Kamma governs the entire life. All the generation of Chakku Dhatus in one life is produced by a one Kamma. So Pachupana is defined realities which happens due to the same cause or similar cause. Same cause or similar causes are considered as Pachupanna. The realities which happened with a dissimilar cause before is called Atita. So the Chakudato of the past life which happened due to a different Kamma is Atita. Chakudato which will happen due to a different Kamma in future is Anagata. So this is the clear evidences given in the commentary of Patisambhida Maga. So what I want to say. If someone contemplates the rising and falling of Chakku Dhatu called following the instructions given in the ancient tradition of Theravadis or Mahaviharis, what do you have to contemplate the rising in the mother's womb, Chakku Dhatu happened and it will pass away at the moment of death? You have no, we have no direct experience about the rising, we have no experience about the mother's womb, we don't remember anything and we don't know when it's going to pass away. So what kind of object is this? This is an idea about the Chakku Dhatu. It is something which I have constructed based on the knowledge. So therefore, the object of Vipassana is something which is called a phenomenal object. So when we focus on such Chakku Dhatu, I'll come to the references later. When we focus on such Chakku Dhatu, for example, Yogi focuses on this Chakku Dhatu rising and falling within the one life, entire life. So at that time, what is his object? He understands the objects very clearly. It refers to your generation of Chakudatus which are actual, which happened in the past, which will pass away in the future. Since it is ultimate reality, whether it's past, present, and future, and some have passed away, some are present, some will not have arisen future, but they all are considered as a Pachupana, Adha Pachupana. So in this object, we are focusing on the existent nature. Existing and existent. So we call existent means the nature of Chakudadu. It means it is sensitive to the color. So whether it is past, present, or future, it doesn't matter. They all, all have a similar name. That is the existent quality of a Chakudadu. Existing quality means when the Chakudadu comes into the three phases of arising, arising, persisting, and passing away, during that time we call Chakudadu is existing. After it has passed away, it is a non-existing Chakudatu. 
of which, which has not arisen yet, is a non-existing Chakudab. But in this non-existing past, future and existing present Chakudatus, they all have the similar quality of being sensitive to the color. So they are existence. So this existent object you consider as a phenomenal object. So you create this object based on the knowledge and then you focus on this. So the object of reference is the actual Chakudatu, which are some are past, some are Patita, some are Pachupanna, I mean the momentary Pachupanna, not the Adha Pachupanna, and some are Anagata. If you are focusing at here, if you are doing the contemplation at this moment. But they all are taken as one object. So in this object, this is a phenomenal object. It includes Atita Pachupanna, Anagata, Chakudatus. So this is the object of reference. So when we focus, we should have a very vivid, clear mind object at that time. This mind object, this mind object has to be very clear. So the ancient Buddhist teachers have offered us with a very valuable information called four aspects of every Paramatta Dhamma, except Nibbana. Nibbana has three. So these, what are these four aspects? Lakkana, Prasad, Pachupatta, Padatta. When you study the meticulously, uh, uh, the, meticulously the literature, questioning the uh, uh, realities and studying them, understanding them, what happens, you will be able to construct this mind image very to a very similar to the actual image, actual reality. So for that, you have to study a lot. You have to think a lot. You have to bring the object and question the teacher and try to understand the object as it is. So if this mind image is wrong, Vipassana is not going to be successful. So therefore, it refers to the real object, but in your contemplation, the object has to be very vivid. So some renowned Vipassana teachers, like the late Prerukani Chandimala Mahatera, a meditation master, he has instructed, before you start meditating, Try to understand the realities very clearly and you should be able to observe them, think about them, consider them as you see, as you see with your eyes. For that, learning, teaching and understanding the realities are very important. Because why it is? The mind image can be if the mind image is wrong. For example, on which occasion? Dikti is a very clear example of the wrong mind image. The same ultimate realities Someone considers this chakku is a production of a god. So we create a mind image out of this reality, which is shows that is not condition. Condition is a condition reality, but a wrong condition created by a god. So idea is fully wrong. So if the mind image has to be very clear, so that's why studying in Buddhism is very important before vipassana meditation. So how do we prove this, uh, prove this notion? If you go to the page number 14, I have given a, a translation directly taken from Neti. In the quotation, the Buddha or any other respectable elder expounds the Dhamma to a certain person. Having heard the teachings, he gains faith. Then he investigates the meaning, word meaning of the teachings, Bhimansa. This is studying, this is Sutamaya. He continues in his investigation without giving up the and bears the teachings in his memory, Utsahana. You study, keep them in mind, study very thoroughly. Then he compares the meaning of the words with other words and also compares this particular teaching with other teachings of the Buddha, cross-referencing. Then, then he further investigates and finds out its authenticity of the teachings. He has learned comparing them with the instructions of Mahapadesa, whether these teachings are just really ma matched with our tradition or not. Then this knowledge is called Sutta Panya, wisdom gained through listening and learning. So this is what we study. Now this is the next step that is important. Then based on this learnedness, he investigates characteristics of the meanings mentioned by words. He understands the characteristics, what this Patari means, what Apo means. Then giving up the meaning of the word, Atta Pandati, he gives up the meaning of the conceptual meaning of the word, he grabs the intrinsic nature of the realities mentioned by, by them. So after studying them, you give up the word and try to understand what is hardness, 
what is cohesion, what is heat in direct experience. Afterwards, without abandoning the intrinsic quality of those known realities, he knows the realities now, without abandoning their intrinsic nature like hardness and so forth, having thought, very important, having thought well, takketa, vitakketa, upaparikha, having deeply considered, he investigates the universal qualities such as impermanence and conditioned nature, sankata nature of those realities. So, knowing the intrinsic nature, he thinks about them, considers about them, with deliberate understanding and gets to know how, what is the rising and falling, what is the nature of suffering, what is the non-selfness, this is what it mentions. So, you can consider how the chakku arise and pass away within one life, this is the idea. Then he repeatedly observed those realities which have been thoroughly investigated, having made them appear to his wisdom as things. Savigahe katva upattani katva, savigahe upattani katva. So you have to think about them very deeply, like that, as Renukani Chantamira Mahatera says, as they appear, as they appear to you, as you are looking at them with eyes, make them very vivid to your mind. Then this is called Chintami Panya, wisdom gained through proper consideration. Now the next step, having based on these two types of wisdom, then the yogi contemplates on phenomena such as mind and matter, conditionality of realities and the universal characteristics. He considers the mind as mind and matter as Nama Rupa, as Sankata and Anicca Dukkha Anatta. The knowledge which arises while thus contemplating. So purposely he getting known, he keep on contemplating on these well-known objects again and again. So while he is contemplating, either in the field of Sota Patimaka or remaining seven parts and fruitions, the wisdom is called Bhavana Mai Panna. Wisdom gained through training. So likewise, so in Vipassana meditation, this understanding, that's why I mentioned, in the beginning I mentioned the mind image doesn't matter in deciding the actual object. But when you come to Vipassana meditation, the clarity of the mind image matters so greatly. It is very important. So to have a very clear mind image in Vipassana meditation, we have to have a good understanding or study of the scriptures. But it is not just an ima image of the mind, it refers to the reality. It refers to the reality. So it is not just a thinking. This mind image, for example, if you consider Chakku, that's why I mentioned Chakku do exist in the reality. It is past, present and future. So that is what you are focusing at. So when you lead your meditation on likewise as Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta, on these objects, the kilesas which can happen regarding these ultimate realities, the objects of reference, will be exhausted at one time. So this is how we understand the vipassana object in terms of this tradition. Object of reference in vipassana should be a paramatta dhamma, but it can be both vidita paramatta ramana and avidita paramatta ramana. Moreover, you can refer back to the quotations. Uh, list. Moreover, it can be a Vijjamana Pachupanna Ramana, Avijjamana Adita Ramana, and Avijjamana Anagata Ramana. Meditation subjects like Khan Pasana, in meditation subjects like Khan Pasana, it can also be a Panyati Misaka Paramatta Ramana. This is the information you can find about the Pasana. Whatever the object of reference is, the yogi is supposed to have vivid image which does not contradict with the objects of reference. That is very important. What are the occasions in which the mind image and the object of reference do not correspond? The best example is the Diti. With the wrong view, beings considered non-self-aggregates as a person. At that time, the mind image do not fit with the actual nature, non-self nature of the object of reference. So this is what I want to discuss. We explained about various types of objects in this lesson, special attention given to the object of reference and also a detailed explanation about the object of vipassana. Yes. Sanyaja as an object of 
Yeah, we are doing the vipassana on the mental image. On the sanjata. Okay. So then, uh, as making that like paramatta vipassana, so what type of wisdom, so what, what's the scope of that mental image? So, you mean another, another chitta, you focus on this uh, mental image, right? So, in vipassana, this mind image refers to the actual reality. Right? It is constructed based on your knowledge. So if you focus on this again, right, it is same again because this image is referring to actually this. It's still the same. Got the point? It's still the same. Because it is something which is developed based on your knowledge. So if uh, for example it appears, it, it, it appears in a certain manner as a as a thing, sabikahe kaptwa, it refers to here. If you focus again, remembers this and still focuses on that same object, it becomes again it refers to. If you focus on here, it's a different place. If focus on the mentality, it's a different place. When you focus on the mentality, what happens? When you focus on the mentality, here also you get a certain kind of an idea in this time. Right? Every object when we focus, now next next lecture, I'll explain. Even in the five sense doors, we are not experienced the object as it is. It is impossible to happen. Always there is a capacity, limitation is in our chitta. But this is not going to hinder your understanding. A, a very basic fundamental law of our tradition, which cannot be explained, is that. Wisdom sees the true nature of the objects and it is enough for your liberation. It is a fundamental that cannot be verified. Yes, question. Just like, say for example, if I reflect the actual object, yeah. and then what the right part of the nature is a Panyati Mistaka? Yeah. So I know it's the object, but when I think about the mental image, so I have Panyati saying that this is my mind, not the, the, the real object. You are the... Ah, okay. Now, now, like that. Uh, so, yeah, okay. how do I differentiate or how do I use the, the vipassana knowledge? Uh, so, for example, now, when you focus on this, you think it's a panjati object, is it? Yes. Why do you think like that? Because I think it's my mind. I am, it's my mind thing. Like, say, for example, uh, if I have a image like this, yeah. I, I, if it's in the camera, I know it's not this one. Yeah. The camera is representing yeah. the image. Only thing is you remove that conceptual idea. It is not going to affect your person. It is not going to affect your person. It means, for example, when you know this theory, if you think you are not seeing the actual reality, you can, you can, because as you said, if you go sharply, Someone can argue, but they, these two are not the same. These are different. You can argue like that. These are not the same. So you will not see the same thing. So the advice of a teacher would be that is not related, is not going to affect your practice. That is not going to affect your practice. Whatever the idea you get, that's why it's some comment. That is the help of a tradition is. They say ultimate realities are just natures. Whether you are a grown-up vipassana practitioner or a non-grown-up vipassana practitioner, always they will appear to you as things. It means conceptual idea cannot fully be ignored by a developed vipassana yogi even. The underlying admonishment is, this is enough. Even you get such an image while you are focusing, that is enough for your liberation. What matters is not understanding the true natures of this image, object and distinguishing them. What matters is knowing that this object of reference is non-self, impermanent and suffering. That is the object of Vipassana practice. This is theoretically I am explaining to get a clear understanding. But, so for example, 
in our tradition. This is another thing of Theravadins. In one uh, uh, book explaining about the, another tradition, uh, in Sinhalese, they, I have read, there is one group said, object is another aspect of chitta. Object is another aspect of chitta. If you focus only on this, the idea is 100% correct. Because this is how we say, this image is how the chitta knows the object. So they say objects are aspect of chitta, but Theravadins are different. With. They only not only talk about this, they talk that there is an object of which exists without our influence. So we say it relates here, another two places. When we are talking about color and the image of the color, now we say in Abhidhamma, most of you have studied, because according to the Buddhist theory, not scientifically, this image will make a, uh, this rupa will make an image in our eye sensitivity. So if I ask a question, do you see the actual image, actual rupa or the image? We see the image. But in our tradition, we are not going to distinguish this as two things. How do we call it? It's the image of the rupa. If you ask the question, image is different from the rupa. Yes, it is. But we are not going to distinguish because what the chapter, according to the thing tradition, what we see is the rupa, even though we see the image of the rupa. It's the image of the rupa. Another point: we have anusaya, loba, and it arises as pariyuktana. And when it arises as pariyuktana in the mind, it is very vivid. You can, it's tangible. You can know it very clearly. But while we are doing wholesome deeds, still the Anusya remains within us. So another tradition in the Katha in the third century suggested that Anusya has no object. Anusya has is not associated with chitta. If you say Anusya associate with chitta, when you are doing a wholesome deed, Anusya should have another chitta, so there should be two chittas. When you are doing a wholesome deed, Anusya should have a different object. So they have very logical suggestion. Anusya is a different reality from which arises. So what was the Mongolian Kutatissa's argument? He says, if you refer to the teachings of the Buddha, according to our tradition, Buddha did not want to make a distinction between these two, like the object and the image of the object. The Mongolian Kutatissa's argument is, that is the same anusya which arises. It is like, for example, he gives sasi niva sasi sangparvito. It's, it's, it's a grammatical usage. So, so what the idea is, he says, it is the loba which arises as part. It is a stage of the same loba. Loba has three stages. Lat latent stage, arising stage, activating stage. Transmitting stage, three stages. So even though it is in three stages, it is not considered as three different things. So in the same way, as you said, this is different from the object. That is sure. It is sanyaja. It is made out of sanya, right? So if you ask, is it is it the object? No, it is not the object. It is how the chitta knows that object. The next thing is when I draw it in this manner. Sometimes you may get it is as an image of the of a, a physical image. No. These are immaterial stuff. Immaterial mentalities focuses upon a real object in a certain manner. That manner manifests to our mind. That's the most important. Manifests to our mind like an image. So for our easy convenience, uh, convenience, uh, use, convenience in usage, I made it I called it as a mind image, but it is not an image like a physical color. It is just an idea of the mind, how the mind sees the object. So actual object of the mind is this object of reference. That is how I would answer. If you have further questions, you can ask yes. One if it is not clear. Yeah. 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 And the second one, yeah. I'm just doing uh, regarding just Nama. Okay. Just right. So that's uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
just nama, yes. Uh, just give me one second. I, I want to clarify your question. Please. Sorry. So you are focusing, okay, Chitta is Vipassana Chitta. You are focusing on Nama and? Uh, okay, so I'm referring to the mental image. No, uh, if you explain from detail, you are Chitta Vipassana Chitta. Yeah, let's say I'm. Um, Okay, Rupa. Right. Uh, let, let's say a person. So okay, oh. Okay, a person. Okay. So then I'm referring as Nama and Rupa. When as Nama and Rupa. Then I have to say the your object is Nama and Rupa. Okay. Right. So the second time when I'm uh, doing the meditation on Sanjaya, so I'm just doing. So when you have a, here you have a certain idea, right? Clarity, you know it, how you know it. It will appear as things, not as just natures, yeah. right? Okay, now from another chitta, what you are focusing at is this. This idea. This idea, you are meaning, okay, right? And at that time, from my understanding, I am doing vipassana, as mere nama, not as rupa. If you say you focus on the chitta, I would agree that. Yes. Right? Yes. If you focus on this mind or blind object means the idea, I would say you are still referring to the same now. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's my question. Okay. Is it clear? If you focus on this, I would say still you are referring to this. Yes. Because you are getting help of your past and you are referring to a Nama again. Nama Rupa. Yeah, I think the time has elapsed. So, so it's a nice, like, uh, nice discussion. Yeah.